Welcome to the last edition of To The Hoop of the Year. We are starting in Tacoma and the 4A State Tournament as both Central Valley teams were in the semis tonight. Central Valley boys taking on the best team in the tournament according to the RPI Union. 340 in the fourth, Union's Tanner Toulson with authority. Central Valley's lead is only three, but they respond from there. Jace Simmons with the steal and the Euro step. This is beautiful. 53-46 Bears, then the long outlet pass off the rebound. Noah Sanders with the exclamation point. Central Valley wins 63-55. They're headed to their first state championship game since 2012. Central Valley girls also playing Union. Only difference is the CV ladies are seated higher, higher. First half, Peyton Howard drives into the lane. She had nine points in the half and led CV with 18 overall. Then Howard dishes to Grace Gildian, who had 12. MJ Bruno with the off-balance layup before the break. CV would lead by nine at the half and never trail after that, winning 61-53. What a dynasty in the Spokane Valley. The Central Valley girls are headed back to the state championship for the third time in five years. Going to be a fun one in Tacoma tomorrow. Now we head to Idaho for the 5A state tournament where Post Falls was looking to advance to the finals. They fell in this round of the state tournament last year. The Trojans opponent tonight was top ranked Rocky Mountain. They were looking to push their winning streak to 22 tonight. Post Falls had upset on the mind though right before the half. They go on a 9-0 run following the drive and finish by Cole Rutherford, James Lee. Steps into a three and hits the Trojans that lead 29-26. Then with five seconds to go, it's Rutherford again. He plays, beat the buzzer, and wins. In the last four minutes, Post Falls went from down four to up five. Post Falls hands Rocky Mountain their first loss to a team from Idaho this season, and they advance to the championship 73-66. Moscow boys battling Kuna in the 4A semis. Moscow led by 24 at one point in the third quarter, but they did everything they could to drop this baby at the end. Lots of missed free throws. Kuna's Sean Austin lays it in with 35 seconds to go to bring it to 60-55 Moscow. Then he hits this deep three to make it 61-58 Bears. So Braden Decker on the line with eight seconds to go gives Moscow a 62-60 lead here. Then this free throw is key. It makes it 63-60 Bears. Austin would have a shot at a three to tie, but it doesn't fall. Kuna would airball another three at the buzzer. Moscow survives 63-60. In the two-way tournament, Westside thumps St. Mary. They head to the third place game. Now back to Washington, but to be fair, Clarkston pretty close to Idaho. They played in the 2A semis at Yakima tonight. Tonight was Clarkston's first appearance in the 2A semis since 2016, playing Lindbergh. Late first quarter, Bantam's down 10-7 when Trey Dreadfulwater nails the tray to tie the game 10-all after one. Early in the second, Clarkston's Alex Italia with the rebound and the putback to give his team a two-point lead over the Eagles. Clarkston would pull off the win, but just barely 42-38, but hey, Still counts. They get a shot at a state title tomorrow. West Valley girls won their game last night with a shot with 0.6 seconds left. Guess what? Tonight's game against Tumwater was equally as thrilling. Third quarter Eagles down by six until Madison Maloney hits, cuts the lead in half. Let's the, less than a minute in the game. Tumwater takes a 40 to 38 lead after a pair of free throws, but off the inbounds pass, West Valley's Jillian Taylor wastes no time, lays it in to tie the game at 40. Seconds to go. Haley Marlowe puts up the three. It's good just before the horn. West Valley wins in another late second half comeback. 43 to 40. The Eagles will face Linden tomorrow night for the state to a crown. In the 1A tournament, Freeman with a not great performance tonight. The girls only put up 25 points. They'll play for third tomorrow. It's now time for state B. We start with St. George's and Brewster in the 2B boys semi. St. George's has finished second the last two years, looking to get to the championship game and change that streak. Dragons were down six midway through the fourth, but trimmed it to one on this Nick Watkins layup. St. George's missed some opportunities to take the lead. They'd have to foul. Brewster's Cade Gerbers, Gebers, excuse me, made a three, made it, made it a three point game after those free throws. Dragons last chance. Dan Rigsby shot does not fall. Brewster holds on 60 to 57. They are going to the state title game tomorrow against Life Christian. 
it's kind of cool to see the kids uh, pull it out, keep composed for the most part, and uh, pull out the win. It's awesome. Um, it was pretty crazy, I'm not going to lie. I can hardly even remember that last four minutes, but uh, we, got, we finished it at the end and won a state championship. Got a David vs. Goliath matchup in the 2B girls semis. The tournament favored in Liberty against 14th seeded Northwest Christian. The Lancers took control in the first half. Macy Burnham doing what she does. She's a walking bucket. Then how about this sequence from Alina Cook? A block shot then goes and gets the ball, pulls out her do-it-herself kit and finishes on the other end. Liberty got up double digits in the first half. The second half, more Burnham and one after getting her own rebound. She had 29 points. Lancers cruised to a 64-44 win back to the state title game where they lost last season. They're looking to change that this year. Ever since the beginning of this year, this summer, we've been grinding for this point and to be back and all of our hard work working up to this. Uh, we knew this was always a goal and we've been just grinding to get here and so it's great. Odessa boys barely got a win over ACH yesterday, turning the page to Nacelle this afternoon. We pick it up in the fourth quarter under three to play. Nacelle down five and with the ball, Colby Glenn hoists one from way downtown. Nothing but net. Lead was down to two. State scoring champ Ryan Moffitt was held in check all day with just five points, but other Tigers picked up the slack. Marcus King drains a mid-range shot from the baseline and the lead was back up to four with just under 10 seconds left. King at the line looking to ice it with a couple free throws. He misses, but Tim DeWolf is there cleaning it up as he had a team high 14 points. The place goes bananas. Odessa into the state title game with a 62-56 win. I, it, I, I've never done it in basketball. It just feels awesome. Like It's a dream come true. I mean, I, we've worked so hard. This is literally the dream. I, it's awesome. One more game. All local matchup in the 1B girls semis between Oaksdale and Pomeroy. We pick it up with about 90 seconds left in play. Oaksdale up one and the Nighthawks get a huge bucket from one of their four freshmen, Jesse Reed, with the take high off the glass. Nighthawks led by three. Pomeroy comes right back. Maddie Dixon double teamed, finds Keeley Mavs. Pirates are back within one, five seconds to go. Pirates at the line, but down by three. Sydney Watko misses the free throw, but the ensuing rebound leads to a jump ball and Pomeroy has another shot. So just over three seconds left. The Pirates get it in and get a pretty good look, but it is off the rim, no good. Oaksdale pulls off the upset over Pomeroy, 37-34. It would mean so much. Um, we are just super excited and we know that we have to show up tomorrow. We got to play our good defense and we just got to do what we do. Inchalium and Mount Vernon Christian playing in the late game tonight. Inchalium took a double digit lead to the half but the Hurricanes tried to cut it in into it. Josie Drew came comes off the pick, banks it in. Still down by 11, though. The Hornets were simply the dominant team tonight. That's an eighth grader hitting that baseline shot. Torrance Finley puts the Hornets up 41-28. Then just before the horn to end the third, it's Riley DeSoto draining the three in any hopes of a hurricane comeback. That made it 48-29. The Hornets go on to win it 67-42. It's just so unbelievable. We've worked, we would just work so hard to be where we are right now. And we're just all really coming together good right now, and it's just so awesome. I'm just so happy. <laughs> and that's awesome. Potlatch in the 1A D1 semi playing Ambrose. The Loggers would trail 24 tonight at half, but Potlatch would storm back. Tyler Wilcoxon gets it, gets it to go. We're heading to overtime, tied at 37. In OT, 90 seconds left. Paul Yerner shots good. 39 37 Ambrose. Last chance for Potlatch. Tyler Wilcoxon. He's going to airball a three. Ambrose only needed one shot in OT to win it. Potlatch falls 39 to 37. For the second straight season, Grace hands Lapway an L in the state semis. For the first time since 2004, there will not be a White Pine League team in a state title game. That's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow.